Hello my dear friends, first of all I wanna say super huge thanks to all of you because we have recently reached 700,000 subscribers and that is simply incredible. And to celebrate this occasion let's just create something special. So here's one of my most popular videos of all time, PowerPoint Slide Zoom Tutorial, where I show you how you can use slide zooms to create dynamic awesome looking presentations. And I was thinking what would happen if I had to redesign and update this slide zoom template. And this is what I came up with, I call it the hover zoom. So you can hover with your mouse over any card and then a slide zoom will pop up and then you can use that slide zoom to zoom into any slide that you wish. And now let me show you how you can create this interactive slide design as well, let's go. Ok my friends, so let's just start with this fresh blank new slide and now let's just go to home, layout and let's choose blank layout for this first slide because we won't be using those title placeholders. And now let's go to insert pictures and let's find a picture that we could use for our slide background. And by the way, all of these beautiful photos come from unsplash.com, links are in the video description. So let's just use this beautiful photo that as you can see doesn't fully cover the whole slide. So let me show you how we can fix that. Just grab one of the corners, hold down the control shift keys to increase the size of this photo. And now let's make sure that the photo is still selected and let's jump into the crop options and let's go to aspect ratio and let's choose 16 by 9. And now let's just click once to apply the changes and skadoosh, now the photo perfectly covers the whole slide. Super duper awesome. And next let me show you how you can create the glass morphic effect in PowerPoint. This is something that we'll be using pretty much in all of the slides. As you can see all of these shapes are having this kind of blurred background with those frosty highlighted edges. And this is called glass morphic effect. So let me show you how we can create that in our slide as well. And now let's just zoom out a little bit so that we can better see what's going on. And now let's just grab this photo and let's move it a little bit to the side so that we can see the slide background. And now let's just hold down the control key and let's make a copy of this photo. And now let's just right click on this photo copy. And let's go to artistic effects and let's look for the blur effect, okay? So here's the blur effect, let's click on it. And now feel free to use any blur amount that you wish, I'm going with 30, okay? And now let's make sure that we copy this blurred photo, so let's just right click on it and let's choose copy. And now we can actually delete this blurred photo, we don't need it anymore. And now let's jump into the slide background fill options and instead of a solid fill let's use picture. And let's click on clipboard and skadoosh my friends, this way we have successfully pasted that blurred photo as a slide background fill. And now we'll be able to create that beautiful glass morphic effect. So now let's just move this original photo to the center and middle of the slide so that it covers everything, that's super duper awesome. And now let's just go to insert shapes and now let's just pick any shape that we like and let's insert it into the slide. For example this beautiful rounded rectangle and now let's just right click on it and let's go to format shape. Let's go to fill options and instead of a solid fill let's click on slide background fill. And skadoosh, as you can see now this rounded rectangle is blurred because it is using the slide background fill which is a blurred photo as its fill. And this way we have successfully created a glass morphic look for this rounded rectangle. And what's awesome about this approach is that you can move this rectangle around and it always adapts to the slide background. That's super duper awesome. And now one more thing that we could add to this rounded rectangle are frosty edges and to make those frosty edges we can use a white inside shadow. And let's make sure that the shadow color is set to white and for the blur amount let's use 20 points. And congratulations my friends, now you have a beautiful glass morphic rounded rectangle with those frosty edges. And now let's just jump into the shape format tab and let's set the height and width of this rectangle to 7 centimeters and that's my lucky number. And next let's make sure that this guy is perfectly centered in the middle of the slide. And now my friends I think it's the perfect time for me to show you how you can create this beautiful hover animation. And let's just jump back to my previous presentation and let's check out this hover animation once again. So as you can see once the mouse touches any of the cards we get this little interactive animation where the icon shrinks and this slide zoom with the label comes in. So let me show you how you can create this beautiful hover animation as well. And before we continue, let me just select this icon, the logo and the slide title and subtitle and let's just copy all of these guys and let's paste them into our slide to save some time. And by the way for the slide title I'm using this beautiful font called Handsome and for the subtitle I'm using My Chroma. Links are in the video description. And I have applied the glass morphic look to this slide title as well so that it stands out a little bit better. And now let's just grab this icon and let's make sure that we align it perfectly into the middle of this rectangle. And by the way all of the beautiful icons come from the PowerPoint itself, I'm using PowerPoint 365. So let's just make sure that the icon and the rounded rectangle are perfectly aligned and now let's just insert a little text box just below the icon. 
And now let's just type in anything that we wish, for example, hover. Later on we'll change it to opportunity, but for now we can leave it the way it is. Beautiful text box hover. Ok my friends, so now let's just duplicate this slide. And on the duplicate slide we'll do a couple of adjustments. So let's just make this icon a little bit smaller and let's move it to the top. And now let's just grab this text box and let's increase its font size. And now let's make sure that we select both of the slides. Let's go to transitions and let's apply a morph transition. And for the duration let's use something fast, for example 0.35 seconds. So let's just check it out on the full screen what we have created so far and as you can see once the mouse goes over the cart nothing happens because the hover animation isn't working yet. So we have to basically click or just use the arrow keys to switch between the slides. So this is what we normally use to switch between the slides. But let me show you how we could actually set up this hover animation. So let's just go to our first slide and let's make sure that we select this rounded rectangle and now let's just go to insert and let's click this button action. And now let's make sure that we go to this tab called mouse over and let's pick this option hyperlink to next slide. And if you would have multiple slides in your presentation I would recommend using this option called slide where you can choose a specific slide where you would like to jump to. But since we have only two slides, next slide will work just fine. And now let's just test it out on the full screen and as you can see once the mouse goes over the cart we jump to the next slide, that's awesome. Now the question is how do we come back to the first slide? And for that we could use this background photo. So let's make sure that we're on the second slide. Let's select the background photo. Let's go to insert action and let's go to mouse over actions. And this time let's hyperlink this photo to the previous slide. Because we want to jump back to the first slide. And let's just click OK. Ok my friends let's check it out on the full screen. Let's see if those mouse over hyperlinks are working as expected. So once we go over the cart we jump to the next slide. And once we touch the photo we jump to the first slide. And this way you have successfully created this beautiful hover animation. That's easy peasy lemon squeezy. And now my friends let's jump back to my previous presentation. And let's check out that hover animation once again. So as you can see in this case once the mouse touches any of the cards a couple of things are happening. So first of all the icon shrinks, then we can see the slide zoom and we can see a label just below the slide zoom. So let's create all of that in our slide as well. And before we jump back let's just quickly look at the structure of this presentation. And as you can see we have a couple of sections. So the first section is called start where we can find the starting slide or the home slide. And next we have the hover section with 4 hover slides. And as you can see in each of the slides a different card is active. And since we have 4 cards we need to have 4 hover slides. And here at the bottom we have a zoom section. So these are basically the slides that we're going to zoom into. And by the way you don't need to create slide sections if you're going to use only slide zooms. But if you're going to use section zooms you need to have at least one slide section. And in this presentation I'm using only slide zooms but I'm using sections as well just to help me visually see the structure of this presentation. And since this is a tutorial I think it's a good practice to set up a couple of sections to better define the structure of this presentation. So let's just insert this start section at the top. Next let's insert a hover section and here at the bottom let's just insert a zoom section. And now in the zoom section we can include any slide that we'd like to zoom into. So let me jump to my previous slide and let's copy one of those uh, zoom slides, for example this one. And let's paste it into our zoom section. And once we paste the slide into the zoom section let's make sure that we choose this option keep source formatting so that everything is looking beautiful. That's nice. Ok my friends so here we have our beautiful hover slide and over here we have our starting slide. So now let's do a couple of adjustments to this starting slide and let's just change this text box to opportunity. And at the same time let's just decrease the font size of this text box and let's move it to the bottom of the slide. Later on we'll be using a mask to hide this text box. And now let's jump to the hover slide and let's update the text box to opportunity as well. And let's resize this text box as well so that it nicely fits this card. And now let's just move this opportunity text box to the bottom of this card. We can as well move this icon a little bit to the top so that we have some space for a slide zoom. So you can insert a slide zoom just by dragging any slide on a different slide. So for example we can just grab this slide number 3 and drag it on slide number 2. And this way we have inserted a slide zoom. Another way how you could do that is just go to insert tab, go to zoom and choose slide zoom. And now you can pick any slide from the list and just click insert. And now my friends let's make sure that the slide zoom nicely fits into this uh, card. Okay. 
And now let's jump into the zoom options and let's make sure that return to zoom is activated. This means that once we will zoom in into the slide, after that we'll be able to zoom back. And now for the zoom duration, let's use something fast, for example half a second. And now let's make our slide zoom a bit nicer by applying the style reflected rounded rectangle. And if you'd like to turn off that reflection, you can just right click on your slide zoom, go to format slide zoom, go to reflection options and let's just choose none. So that we have only those beautiful rounded corners. And next my friends, let's make sure that we copy the slide zoom and let's paste it into the starting slide as well. Let's just make sure that we move it below the cart and we can decrease its size as well. Ok, so now the starting slide and the hover slide have the same slide zoom. So let's check it out on the full screen and let's see how this hover animation looks like with the slide zoom. And now as you can see once the mouse goes over the cart, the slide zoom together with the opportunity text box comes up. And of course we can click on the slide zoom to zoom into this beautiful slide. And once we move away from the cart, we transition to the first slide, so everything is working as expected. But of course we'd like to mask this slide zoom and that opportunity text box in the first slide. So let me show you how we can create that mask. And to create the mask that we need, we can use this background photo and this rectangle. So let's just make a duplicate of this rectangle and we can change its color to something different. Let's just use this beautiful blue color, OK. And next we'll have to select the background photo, this blue rectangle, go to merge shapes and choose subtract. And this way we'll punch a hole inside of this photo. But first let's make sure that this blue rectangle is in the middle of the slide, directly on top of that blurred card. Ok, so now since the blue rectangle is directly in the center of the slide, let's select the background photo, hold down the shift key, select the blue rectangle, let's go to merge shapes and choose subtract. And now it might seem that nothing really happened and that everything is still looking the same, but we have definitely punched a hole inside of this photo. And we can check that by going into the selection pane. Let me just first rename this photo to mask and let's just drag it to the top of the selection pane. And now as you can see all of the elements on the slide are hidden except this card in the middle, because here we have punched a hole. And now once I'm moving this photo mask around, you can definitely see the rest of the slide elements on the slide such as the slide title, the slide zoom and the text box. So let's just make sure that this photo mask stays in the center of the slide and let's just bring back the slide title, subtitle and the logo to front. So we can just select these guys and bring them to the top of the selection pane list. And let's just make sure that the slide zoom and the opportunity text box stay behind the mask. This is what we want. And now let's just copy the photo mask, let's go to the second slide, let's delete the old background photo, let's paste in the new photo mask, ok. Once again we can bring back the slide title, subtitle and the logo, so let's select all of these guys, let's bring them to the top. And now let's make sure that this photo mask has the mouse over action that will bring us to the previous slide. So let's go to insert action, let's jump to the mouse over tab and let's choose hyperlink to previous slide. Ok. And now let's check it out on the full screen. Ok my friends, so as you can see first of all the slide zoom is hidden behind the mask and once the mouse touches the cart we jump into the second slide and the slide zoom comes up. And of course we can click on the slide zoom, check out the slide and zoom back, so everything is working according to the plan. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And next my friends, let's change up the inside shadow for this hover cart, we'll create an effect as if this cart is being selected. So let's go to shadows, let's use this inside top shadow, let's use color white, no transparency. And now let's just zoom in a little bit so that we can better see what's going on. And now let's just play with the blur and with the distance sliders until we get what we like. And next my friends, let's add some style to this opportunity text box as well. Let's set its fill to slide background fill, that's beautiful. And now let's go to shadows and let's choose this outside shadow. Let's pick white and let's use zero transparency and for the size let's use 100% and let's go with the blur of 35 points. Looking beautiful. And next I think we could add some rounded corners to this opportunity text box. So let's go to edit shape and let's choose the rounded rectangle. And now let's just grab this yellow dot and let's adjust roundness. And we can jump into the text options and make sure that this text box has no margins. So that our text has enough space inside of this rectangle. And for the vertical alignment let's go with the middle. And now let me make a few more adjustments so that everything is sitting nicely inside of this card. And by the way, since we have changed the opportunity text box from a simple rectangle to a rounded rectangle, let's make sure that we copy this text box from the hover slide and let's paste it into the starting slide, because otherwise the morph transition might not work correctly. And let's just go into the selection pane and let's just hide the mask for now so that we can select and delete the old text box and now let's just paste in the new opportunity text box and now let's just decrease the font size and let's bring it just below the slide zoom. 
And at the same time, let's just jump into the fill options and let's just set the fill to no fill. And for the shadow, let's use no shadow because we don't need fill and shadow for the starting slide. We want to see that highlighted effect on the hover slide only. And let's make sure that we turn on the mask and let's just make sure that this uh, little opportunity text box is behind the mask. Okay, my friends, and next, let's just check it out on the full screen. Let's see how this highlighted effect looks like. And as you can see, once the mouse goes over the card, the card gets highlighted. That's super duper awesome. Everything is working according to the plan. And next, my friends, let's say you'd like to zoom in, show a couple of slides, and only then zoom back. Because currently, as you can see, we're just zooming into a single slide and zooming back. So let me show you how you can make that work with multiple slides. And for that, we'll have to use section zooms. And before we continue, let me just grab a few more slides from my previous presentation. And let's just select these three beautiful slides. Let's copy them and let's paste them into our zoom section. And once again, let's make sure that we keep the source formatting so that everything is looking perfect inside of these pasted slides. And next, let's jump into our starting slide. Let's hide the mask and let's delete this slide zoom because now we'll have to insert a section zoom. So let's go insert, let's go to zoom and let's choose section zoom. So as you can see, we have three sections inside of this presentation. You can pick any of them and I'm just going with the zoom section. Ok, and once again, we can make sure that return to zoom is activated and for the zoom duration, we can use half a second. That's beautiful. And once again, let's just add those beautiful rounded corners and let's disable the reflection. We don't need to see reflection. Those rounded corners are enough. Ok, and now let's just resize this section zoom and let's just drag it below the card, just like that. And over here, as you can see, we have these two little numbers, 3 to 6, which means that we're going to zoom into this section and go through slides 3 to 6. That's the power of section zooms. And now let's just cap at this section zoom because we'll have to paste it into the hover slide. And at the same time, let's turn on the mask. And now on the hover slide, let's delete the old slide zoom, let's paste in the section zoom and let's make sure that it fits nicely inside of the cart. That's super duper awesome. And by the way, for all of these slides that we have in the zoom section, we can choose any slide transition that we wish. So let's just make sure that all of these zoom slides are selected and let's pick, for example, this uncover slide transition direction from right. So now, once we will zoom into the zoom section, the rest of the slides should be uncovered. So let's check it out on the full screen. And now I can see that the section zoom animation is looking a little bit strange. Uh, don't worry, let me show you how we can fix that. Let's just jump into the hover slide. And let's make sure that the section zoom is behind the mask and now everything should be looking super smooth. Okay, so now the hover animation is looking perfect and now let's just test out that section zoom. So here we zoom into the first slide in the section and now the rest of the slides are being uncovered with the uncovered transition. So let's just check it out once again. So once we click, we zoom into the first slide in the section, we go through the slides and after the last slide in the section, we just zoom back. So everything is working as expected. So now, my dear friends, you know how to use slide zooms and section zooms with hover animations. And in my previous presentation, I have created these four beautiful cards with four slide zooms. So let's check them out once again. And by the way, tutorial slides are absolutely free. Link is in the video description. And if you have enjoyed this video, I'm sure you will enjoy this video as well. This is a video from my second channel, Interstellar PowerPoint, where you will learn how you can create this beautiful animated slide design with section zooms. So I'll see you there.